This is a YFM 650V4 professional model with the DJI Wukong M system and this is prepared for Mr. John, uh, a photographer which will use this machine in Brazil to shoot some footage. Alright, so uh, first off when you get this quadcopter it will be similarly like this. The landing gear won't be this way, it will be completely opened so you need to install these two rods on the landing gear, very easy, they just click fit inside. And then I can show you the procedure on how to add the stuff. Camera gimbal is just click fit once again. That's the ease. If you experience vibrations, you can, however, still add more foam and padding on these two lines, on these two posts. Uh, camera gimbal then will plug into F1 and F2 ports. Now that the quadcopter is unfold, you can easily add the landing gear. Four. After this is done, this is your battery tray. Add it here. And remember, if your uh, CG is not balanced, you can move it forward or backward so that your battery can move forward and backward and you can easily balance the CG. When we deliver, we will disconnect, I mean we will uh, unmount the GPS from here. So all you need to do is use a double-sided tape and mount the GPS so that the arrow is pointing to the forward of the quadcopter. Okay? There is one open port here where you will connect the data radio. That's the only open port coming from GPS, so you will connect the data radio here when you want to use it, of course. For propellers, I have balanced it, so remember clockwise and counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise, this is clockwise, okay? So the front left is your clockwise, front right is your counterclockwise similarly on the back they will change positions and this one will be clockwise and this one will be counterclockwise so this is counterclockwise this is clockwise let us install the propellers okay here before the flight a few points i would like to mention before you fly because these motors are very powerful and the upgraded arms are longer, so there is more chances that on some full throttle or 75% throttle climb rate, the arm, one or two arms, which are accordingly with the uh, rotation of the motor, might fold down inside. So uh, for that, it's just, it's not a flaw, it's not a drawback or issue, it's not a problem, but it's just because motors are too powerful and the arms are longer than uh, uh, stock version. So what you can do is simply put a zip tie keeping the arm outwards so it won't fold and when you want to fold you just cut the zip tie and fold the quadcopter for storage but before flight you actually don't need it but just to be safe you need to put a zip tie here so arms will not fold and make sure when you mount the canopy on top make sure that all the cables are actually inside later you can actually put some tape for these cables uh, for these wires antenna cables coming out i will do it for you anyway because right now we are testing uh, the second thing is if you feel the uh, payload is not good enough or it cannot carry uh, cannot uh, climb up because uh, you're using sony nex5 or stuff like that you can use 14 inch or even 15 inch propeller with a little bit more pitch on the propeller a little bit more pitch on the propeller it might give you more uh, payload and these motors can handle 16 inch propellers easily also you might want to try lighter batteries like 4s or 3s in parallel 2 3s in parallel can sometimes be lighter than a 4s 5000 mh so your basic task or your basic aim should be to keep the quadcopter as light as possible so you can have more payload for the camera left. If you add a very heavy battery, you are actually using up all the payload already for your camera and it won't fly with the camera. So keep the quadcopter light and keep the payload safe and free for the uh, camera. Now for the radio, 
very simple your name is right here which looks good let me tell you the switches uh, apart from the throw sticks this is your left and right okay forward and backward this is turn right and turn left that means your right and your left or rotate and this is your throttle up and down the more the throttle the higher the quadcopter will go and if you want GPS position and altitude hold to work just put the throttle in the middle and you can even put the radio down and your quadcopter will hover at one position now to activate the GPS position hold mode you have the switch E here which is the flight mode switch okay at the moment down it's a manual mode it's for professional pilots or pilots with the skills so do not fly in manual mode what you want to do is put in the middle so it will have an altitude hold or for you to shoot good videos put it all the way up which we actually set down put all the way up right here so it will be in GPS position hold mode and then it will hold its position in the air and also it will hold the altitude having that you should have the throttle in the middle okay all right now when you want your quadcopter to come back put the B switch down making sure that your quadcopter in GPS position hold mode and your throttle is in the middle or more you put the switch B down and your quadcopter will auto return to home and land okay once it lands and turns off the propellers uh, motors put the throttle down completely put the switch B up and put the switch E to manual mode so you will you're ready for the next flight okay now during the return to home when the quadcopter is coming back never ever touch the throttle or switch E because if you put the switch E to attitude or manual mode your RTH will be cancelled and if your throttle is zero your quadcopter will fall like a stone from the sky all right remember that now what more is the intelligent orientation control that is switch C in the middle is a point of interest and down is a home lock so how to use this feature or what this feature do I would highly recommend that you read the user manual and it will show you how to do it and we will also uh, later try to show you how to work on the POI but actually if you read the user manual you can easily use it POI or point of interest means your quadcopter will lock its head on one point and then you can move the aileron stick to left or right and your quadcopter will circle around that point keeping the camera focused at one point so you can get a 360 degree off one object easily okay so this is it and uh, we are going to give it a test flight and show you how to do GPS calibration and compass calibration um, for the camera tilt to control the camera tilt I will actually add that feature later in the radio programming so you can use the camera knob uh, sorry the radio knob to move left and right and control the tilt angle of your camera all right so let's do the GPS compass calibration